It often happens in our clinic that a patient comes in with an unwitnessed episode of loss of consciousness and as a part of an investigation an EEG is done and sometimes the basis for treating or making further diagnosis is all dependent on the interpretation of the EEG. If someone unfortunately overreads the CG, the patient may end up with a lifelong treatment with anti-epileptic medications, may potentially lose his or her job, and may lose the driving privileges. So in the next few slides, I'll go over some of the patterns that can be misinterpreted as seizures or epileptic form discharges and caution you that be careful before making your interpretations. So let's move on. So this is an EEG. I'm sure most of you who read EEGs are able to make the correct diagnosis. This is ocular flutter, so it has nothing to do with epilepsy. What you see here is this rapid movements of the eyes. This is not eye blinking, but rather ocular flutter. The patient's eyes may or may not be open. You also uh, can appreciate some alpha rhythm in the parietal occipital head regions. This next EEG demonstrates small sharp spikes. So these are small sharp spikes. These are called benign EEG variants. So these are discharges that sometimes can be over called as epileptiform activity. This is a benign variant and is present in normal EEGs. This is very clear. This is a patient who is in stage 2 sleep. You are able to appreciate sleep spindles here. These are ECG artifact. So you can correlate that with uh, putting an ECG uh, channel and it is quite obvious that these are this is an ECG artifact. Make sure you don't overread it. Sometimes it appears more widely distributed, so just be careful. This is a glossokinetic artifact. This particular patient was moving her tongue while the CEG was being done. So what you see here, this has nothing to do with slowing. This is actually a glossokinetic artifact, which basically means artifact created from the movement of tongue. This is a patient on this EEG you see an asymmetry between the left and the right hemisphere so all the odd numbers represent EEG acquired from the left hemisphere and the even numbers demonstrate EEG from the right hemisphere. This is what is called a breach rhythm. So if someone has a surgery or any kind of a skull fracture you tend to record high uh, high frequency activity from that side and the amplitudes can in fact be higher. So this what you see here, this is not epilepsy form activity, this is rather a breach rhythm spelled B-R-E-A-C-H. It has nothing to do with breach delivery. These sharp waves or these spike-like activity is actually lateral rectus spikes or rectus muscle spikes. This is this movement, this uh, artifact created from saccadic eye movement and this is the sharp discharge that precedes it is called a rectus muscle spike. It's also called a pre-saccadic spike potential. It's physiological, it's normal, it has nothing to do with epilepsy. On this EG you can identify the eye blinks and you can identify some alpha rhythm in the background. So what you see here, these sharp components are not occipital, occipital spikes. These are what are called lambda waves, which is produced on the EEG when someone has eye movements or when someone is scanning through an object. These waves can be generated on the EEG. So these are called lambda waves. And basically this artifact here, this is a kind of a muscle artifact that is created when the person was rubbing his eyes. So this is an artifact that was created from rubbing the uh, rubbing of the eyes and it is not epileptic form activity. It does not tem uh, represent epileptic discharges. Now there is possibility someone can overread this as temporal slow activity or a temporal lobe seizure. 
this is what is called a rhythmic mid-temporal theta activity of drowsiness. So as the patient goes into drowsiness, you can see this theta activity, which is rhythmic. Sometimes it is notched. It appears in the mid-temporal head region. Usually the highest amplitudes are at T3 or T4, which is mid-temporal. If you record the EG long enough, you will see this equally distributed between the left and the right hemisphere. This is a benign variant, and it has nothing to do with epilepsy. This particular artifact, it's not an artifact, but it is more of a benign variant. What you see is positive sharp waves in the temporal head region. So these are the six hertz. So you can count one, two, three, four, five, six. Six hertz positive sharp waves and typically occur in the posterior temporal head region. Sometimes these appear at a frequency of 6 hertz at, and at the other times you can see 14 hertz positive spikes and this is another type of a benign variant. Okay, so we already looked at one example of these spikes. So these are rectus muscle spikes and are produced from horizontal or vertical saccadic movements of saccadic movements and you can see these spikes. These are not epileptic spikes. These are not epileptiform activity. This does not have any correlation with epilepsy. These are benign variants and should not be overread. Okay, what you see here is this person is undergoing photic stimulation. So all these red marks demonstrate the frequency, the flash frequency. What you see here is probably the muscle patient is contracting his uh, ocular muscles and that's causing the photomyogenic response. So because of light, it's called photo. Myogenic means something to do with the muscle. So this is a photomyogenic response and it is not pathological. It is not epileptiform. And this particular artifact was created in this patient because patient was having was experiencing a lot of tremors. So this is tremor artifact. This is not seizure. And there's a lot of muscle artifact in the EG. So this is an ab this is a normal EG with tremor artifact and muscle artifact, and it has nothing to do with the uh, nothing to do with epilepsy. So that those are those were the slides. I hope uh, this helps you in making your interpretation make sure that you understand what are benign EG variants, EG, uh, EG waves that appear epileptiform but are actually physiological phenomena. Good luck with your exams or good luck with your EG interpretation. Thank you. I'll see you at the next talk.